From the home of the Cowboys, Texas Stadium, it's U.S. Supercross action under threatening skies. Hello, everyone, and welcome to round 12 of the U.S. Supercross Series. I'm Art Ekman, along with David Bailey. Tonight, history in the making, maybe, Jeremy McGrath goes for his 28th career Supercross victory, tying him with the all-time record holder, Rick Johnson. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. This kid can definitely ride Supercross, and the things are only going to get easier for him now. Mike LaRocco out with the injured arm, and I think he wants to put the title away, and a win here tonight would just make that that much sweeter and easier. The reward back on track, going back on the podium in the last race. He's only one point away from Mike Kudrowski, third in the points race, and with LaRocco out now, hey, anything could happen there. Well, if I was Mike Kudrowski or Larry Ward, I'd be doing all I could to try to maintain second in the series, because you saw how easy it was for LaRocco to have a problem. Same thing could happen in the grass. And one of those two could find themselves a Supercross champion. Well, this Texas Stadium has been known for last lap finishes, excitement. Last year was a good one between McGrath and Mike Kudrowski. They tossed each other onto the ground, into the starting gate, and Morocco ended up with the win. And one of my favorites was Jeff Ward and Jeff Stanton going for it the last lap. Stanton muscling his way by, but tossed his bike into the crowd, and Ward came away with the win. Let's take a look at the Suzuki track map. Looks pretty much the same as it always does, Art, but this week, one thing is different. See that long whoop to do section next to the starting line, almost 200 feet. Jeremy's got a new do. He's with Jan right now. Art, with the record on the line tonight, Jeremy McGrath wants to make sure that everything is stacked in his favor, including superstition. I notice you have the black pants on. You've had a few troubles with the yellow ones? Yeah, at the last couple races, I've been on the ground with the yellow pants, so... Uh trying to set a record tonight so back to the black pants now tell me about a clutch lever we noticed that all the paint is worn off the front of this clutch lever we found out that hasn't been changed for years what's the deal there i think that's just one of my mechanic superstitions uh he can't seem to find any paint or anything i suppose <laughs> well we wish you luck tonight you know let's ask a few seasoned veterans about their favorite superstitions well the two that come to mind are um what the first one would be uh the helmets you know these guys spend uh a lot of the time getting their helmets all painted and everything, but nobody likes to wear a brand new helmet out in the track. So the very first thing they do is throw it on the ground or drop it on the ground, try to get a scratch on it before they have to wear it out there on the track. The yeah, second one that comes to mind is one that uh, Bob Hanna used to use, and he always liked to have cottage cheese and peaches in the cooler for race day. So, you know, that was his deal, and uh, that was my job to make sure it was there. My favorite superstition is the one that David Bailey had. He had two different colored socks because he'd end up winning a race one time that he had uh, one color on his left foot and another on the right foot. So from then on out, he used to always ride practice in the race, that same situation with the same colored socks. The other way was a uh, rider had won a Grand Prix one time. So in all his practice sessions, he always wore that double digit number in practice before the race. And then he would go back to his uh, normal number. Earlier this afternoon, the fans here in the Dallas area got their chance for an up-close visit with their favorite rider. Well, it's been a long time since I've been out there, Art, but one thing remains the same, and that's the relationship between the riders and the fans. There's a great look at Doug Henry signing some autographs and a uh, pretty big crowd in the Honda camp with all the success they've had in Supercross. We also found out Jeremy McGrath's not the only rider with a different look tonight. Well, my sponsor, Garnet Boots, made up these cowhide boots for the race here and uh, for all the Texas races. I wore them in Houston a few weeks ago, and now I have them in Dallas. And um, it's just kind of unique. They put the fur on the boot and just made them like regular Garnet boots. And, um, you know, it's something just different, and they wanted to show the people that, you know, Garnet has a little bit of cowboy in him. Hopefully they won't make me ride like a bucking Bronco, <laughs> and I'll be able to, you know, ride a little bit smoother. The fans are undercover here at Texas Stadium. It might be a good thing because we've got tornado warnings and rain forecast for later on. This edition of ESPN Speed World is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And by Honda, defending champions and holders of the past seven consecutive Supercross titles. Honda, come ride with us. This is a 1-800-COLLECT call. Hey, this is your son, Jeremy. Your son, Jeremy. Trying to be funny? <laughs> I've been eating pretty good. Doug and I were just hanging out. Cheese. I'm not an actor. What am I doing? <laughs> Jeff's doing good. He says to say hi. Hi, Dad. <laughs> Steve says to say hi. Hi, Mom and Dad. Say what? I think we're going to take it tonight. 
No, I'd rather have it on your bill than mine. I'm getting ready to go race right now. Mom, guess what? We just won the championship again. It's the Honda Flashback. Just last year, one of the most exciting races of the 1994 season. We showed you the surprise finish. This is what led up to that finish. Well, Jeremy McGrath had a big lead as usual, but Mike Kudrowski was chopping into it. And as they take the white flag, Kudrowski made the pass, and the battle began. McGrath bumping Kudrowski to the outside, but Kudrowski wanted this win bad, and he didn't budge. Kudrowski making his move out of the whoops right in front of the mechanics area. Keep your eye tuned to this one. McGrath could have ended his career right there. Well, he came away with a knee injury. He still got up and finished third. And Mike Kudrowski, who went off into the starting gate, wound up in second, but LaRocco snuck through and took the win. David, no one dreamed LaRocco would win that one. It just shows how quickly things can happen. As we take a look at our Suzuki highlights from heat number one. Well, it was Team Honda of Troy Riders. Mike Craig and Todd DeHoop that went out to an early lead, but look at the strength of Kudrowski. He muscled through that whoop section and moved into the number two spot. Way back was number five, Steve Lampson, hurt in practice, a severe hurt to his knee and cracked a lip. But it was Craig and Henry pulling away from the field. Henry played it smart. Instead of making a do or die battle of it, he waited for the opportunity and it will come on the very last lap. Right there, he jumps to the inside of Mike Craig, but watch Mike Craig comes back through that long whoop section. Look at the muscle through there. Craig came off the finish line jump in neutral, hesitated. Henry shot by him for his fourth heat win in the last five qualifying heats. While Henry was picking up yet another heat race win, Kudrowski, who earlier ran second, dropped to third. And Todd DeHoop has made every main this year for the first time this season, got there with a direct transfer out of the qualifying heat. In Heat 2, brought to you by Suzuki, it was Jeremy McGrath, who else, breaking out in front early. It was Larry Ward coming through, leading the Yamaha camp, met right here passing down, but later, Larry Ward will case it on a jump and bruise his chest, drops out of qualifying position. He had a battle with John Dowd right there, but it was Brian Swink, number 10, and John Dowd, who had the battle for third place, Swink holding on to third. And Swank, who's been coming on strong lately, drops down to number four position. McGrath knack-knacking his way to another victory. Now the top four riders make it directly to the main event out of the qualifying heats. The rest have to go on to the semifinal round to try to get in. Lewis, Lawrence, Ward, and Albertine were forced to go to the semifinals out of Suzuki heat race number two. Number 21, Larry Brooks, took the whole shot in the Suzuki semifinal round number one his first event since San Diego six races ago. It was KTM's Jeff DeMent who took the lead on lap number one and went all the way. Taking advantage of that lack of experience by Larry Brooks and pumped up by the hometown crowd, Jeff DeMent went on to take semi number one. Seven times DeMent was forced to the last chance qualifier this season. What an appropriate victory here in the semifinal round for DeMent. Brooks right behind him in second place. Also checking those that went directly to the main as five riders out of the semifinal rounds go to the main. You see Antonez, John Sebastian Roy, and Gene Numack. By Suzuki semifinal heat number two, the heavens had opened up. And you what see, a mess. <laughs> you see right there, the problems began for Grayson Goodman. Anywhere that dirt is real shiny, it's like an ice skating rink. And right there, Greg Albertine goes to the lead, and Lewis is down in the whoops. Kyle Lewis got the whole shot, but went down. Albertine... Coming off an eighth place finish at the Charlotte, grabbed the lead. Larry Ward trying to make sure he doesn't have to go to that last chance again. Finds a better line around Albertine through the whoops. You can see how slick it's getting. It made it almost impossible for these riders to clear the doubles and triples. And as you'll see, it got a lot worse later. Ward, Albertine, Lawrence, and Goodwin, along with Lewis, going directly to the main. The last chance qualifier. Hey, the 259 truckloads of dirt turned to mud. It spelled opportunity for number 33, Tony Amaradio, though. Watch him. Crowd couldn't believe their eyes. Once the rain began to fall, nobody was even doubling, and Tony does the triple no problem, salutes the crowd, and takes the last chance qualifier. The highlight of his season so far, Tony Amaradio. And number 509 wading through the mud, Carl Hansen grabbing the remaining spot for the gate positions. 
now it is no longer raining. It is hailing here at Texas Stadium, and we'll be back. We're just about set for the 125 main event. Here's the Suzuki starting grid for the 125 race. With the 125 East already decided and its top three out of four stars out with injuries, what is usually an adrenaline-pumping East-West confrontation has lost a lot of its luster. Mike Brown is one of those coming off his first win who hopes to take advantage of the situation. Yeah, last weekend at Charlotte, I come out with a win. I got a good start last weekend. Rode a whole race, didn't look back. Arms didn't get tired. I mean, pulled away a pretty good lead and come to the East-West race this weekend down in Dallas and hope to do the same thing. A uh, couple of guys on the East are out, um, Wyndham and Ferry's out of the race, but I don't, our main guy here is Huffman and Ryan Hughes, and that's who I'm looking to beat tonight. I hope I go out and uh, give a good show tonight and win. My motivation is, you know, always to win, so I guess, you know, that's how I keep myself motivated. I'd rather ride uh, 250. I feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more smoother on it, but... You know, I was contracted to ride 125 at the beginning of the year, so I'm going to have to finish out the year. And, you know, I want to beat Damon really bad. And no one's beaten him this year, and uh, I want to do the job. And, you know, hopefully tonight will be the night. Take one race at a time like everyone tries to do. But um, also, I am a lot more relaxed, you know, from last year where I was a little more tighter, and I really didn't win that much. And I think uh, this year that's helped me out a little bit. Damon Huffman trying to continue his consecutive win string. He's won all five of his 125 races this season with three more on the schedule. His competition, well, it should come from maybe number nine, Ryan Hughes. See him right there putting his goggles on. And while we're on the subject of goggles, vision here is going to be impossible. As soon as they get to the first turn, only the guy that gets the whole shot is going to have vision. And pretty soon, even if you're just riding by yourself, you've got mud flinging up off your front fender and you can't even see. That was an interesting shot. The crowd in short sleeve shirts <laughs> under the cover here at Texas Stadium and the rain coming down in between as we get set for this 125 main. Jimmy Nice's umbrella, the last to leave the front row, and they're off. Damon Huffman gets the great start. Number one, James Dodd, 16. Mike Brown, 26, in good shape. Mikel Pichon is in fourth. Dicker goes down. Ryan Hughes is caught up. You see number nine caught up in the fray. David Pingree also in the cold and wet. They've got a lot of makeup room now. It's going to be tough for Ryan. You can, I noticed Ryan has a couple of, like, shop rags hanging out of the back of his jersey and pants right there. That's so he can wipe his hands off or possibly even wipe his goggles later. You saw he already tried to pull a tear away. Boy, getting such a bad start now, that means all the mud's going to be flying your way. Well, everyone's going everywhere. It's not like there's a groove and everyone's in it. So if he tries to take a different line, he's going to get sprayed no matter what. I think right now, more than anything else, for Ryan or any of the riders that are having to come from behind and see right here Pichon, vision is the number one key. Here's James Dobb on the Troy machine, makes the pass on Huffman here with the first lap. Huffman trying to regain the lead. You see a lot of these riders have elected to run rags so they can wipe off their hands in case you fall and you have to put your hand in the mud. You can't even hang on to the grip anymore. So that allows you to be able to wipe it off and still get some traction. Dob out in front with Huffman in second place, Pichon in third. Chad Pedersen, number 36, in fourth. The mechanics had a lot of work to do between uh, qualifying and the main event. Well, it's interesting because during the qualifying, the track was perfect, ideal conditions, and in the back of their mind, they thought the rain may be coming. So possibly they had you know, a different tire mounted on another wheel just in case. Another thing you do is you lower the tire pressure so that that tire flattens out and you can get more traction because this ground is so hard, it's not going to go anywhere. You're just basically filling up with water, and it's just real slimy on the top. Pichon moving into second place in front of number one, Damon Huffman. Dobb having trouble. Here comes Pichon and Huffman on the inside. That's well, amazing. These guys are still able to jump that double. Look at them. Three abreast as they enter the swoop section. What a nice block by Huffman as he's got the advantage now. Can take either angle if he can get the momentum. Dobb on the inside. Whoa, he looks like he tried to block him, but Huffman just accelerated by him. And check out this battle. Three abreast through the whoop to do sections again. Chad Pedersen having his problems. Pichon, I would expect will ride extremely well in this mud as it grows later into the race. He rides in the mud in Europe a lot more than we do here in the States. I think he'd be a lot more comfortable in this situation. One good thing about the hail and the rain right now is it washes the numbers off. 
Well, the scoring is actually pretty good. We can we can identify them here, and usually that's not the case. This is not a sticky mud. It's just basically a watery grease on top of an already really hard packed surface. As we watch for Sean, Huffman is starting to pull away already. We'll be back with more 125 action in a moment. We're back at Texas Stadium for the 125 main event. Pashon number 101. And Dobb, number 16, in second and third. And there goes Pashon sliding out on the straightaway. Well, that was kind of weird. It looks like he just got really sideways one way and tried to overcorrect it. It's so slick. Any slightest move, and you're down. The it's, water does not penetrate through this hard pack underneath. It no, stays it's on actually, the top. Yeah, these guys are actually pretty lucky. I've ridden in situations where this much rain, they'd almost have to call the race because the ruts everywhere, the track eats down through all the dirt, and you get down to the plywood, and you can't even ride. And right now, these guys are still going pretty fast. Mike Brown starting to make a move. Now number 26. Oh, what a nice mud move. <laughs> Looks like he's been a mudder before. Well, it's so slippery. You're able to just do anything you want with the bike. And look at Ryan Hughes coming on strong through the whoop section. Hughes is passing. He's already passed three riders to move into fourth position. So he's gone from seventh to fourth and taking on Mike Brown. And you can see a lot of these guys reaching up, trying to clear their vision again. What they do is they use a tear-off in the beginning in case they are to get a bad start. Then they can get their good vision right away. Then they go to a roll-off system, like what you see in car racing, where they move that film strip across the lens and you get clear vision, probably for the whole race. David, this is phenomenal. Ryan Hughes was almost last after getting caught up in the first-turn accident. And now he's moved into third as he moves by number 26, Mike Brown. Well, the ride in these kind of conditions, it just takes experience and excellent balance. And probably half the guys Ryan passed had already fallen down. So he's able to find, you know, the, the spots where everyone's having trouble and go around those riders. And that probably helped him. You see right there, he went wide. He's out there in that loose uh, kind of mucky stuff where all that loose soil got pushed into a pile. And if you ride through that, you don't go sideways. So he gets more traction there. Couple stuck in the mud off the track. It's going to be a common factor, I have a feeling, in the 250 race as well. As we see James Dobb, he's in second place. Ryan Hughes, though, not far behind him. Another thing that makes it difficult for these guys is when they put their foot down. Usually you kind of rely on your foot for balance, and your foot skids, and that just really messes everybody up. Right here, I'm really impressed with Damon Huffman. This kid, I wouldn't expect to ride that well in the mud. He's just riding excellent. He's pulled away from these two. And these two, you met James Dobb, number 16, and Ryan Hughes, number 9. And they're in a battle for second place. Here comes Hughes on that difficult whoop section. Made even more difficult because of the weather conditions. Well, he has a nice rhythm through there. He was jumping two, 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 almost all the way through there, enough to make that pass. And right here, you got to be careful and not let the front wheel ride through these water puddles. You try to wheelie through there. Otherwise, all that water splashes up. It can get into the, into the bike, sometimes into the carburetor. And I've had my throttle stick before. Ryan Hughes in second place. Quite a ways behind our leader, though, Damon Huffman. The Acton, California rider who's won a personal season record of five in a row and has also won both previous East-West confrontations. That was with Ferry and Wyndham in the races at the time in Minnesota and Houston. You know, Arda, none of those wins really surprised me. I expected Huffman to go out there and ride well. Whoa, David Huffman doing a 360. He's got a large enough lead, though, and he keeps it running. He's still in first place, David. Yeah, that was funny. I mean, that just reinforces my point. The kid has got such incredible balance, and he's just not going to drop this bike. Oh, right here, James Dobb. Has, he's got something caught in the rear wheels, locked it up. I don't know. That could be banners or maybe one of those hay bale covers. Right there, just to add insult, he gets a little drive-by splash, like he's standing on the sidewalk at a bus station. Right now, it's Huffman, Hughes, and Brown, but anything can happen in this quagmire. We'll be back. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Jan Vikas at a very wet Texas stadium. The 125 main is winding down. This is Ryan Hughes in second place, our leader, number one. He's won them all so far this year, Damon Huffman. Look at that. Clearing the double jumps, jumping up onto the finish line jump, jumping down. It's going to take a lot more than rain to slow this kid down. We've started our Honda stopwatch to give us an interval between first and second. We mentioned earlier that it was a dominating lead by Damon, and then he did a little 360. Let's see how they chopped it down if they did. These are all lappers. Don't worry about that. We'll try to identify Ryan Hughes if we can, depending on how much mud he's got on his number. 
But his riding style is very easy. Right there on the right. That's uh, and he's looking over at Damon Huffman going the other way. Right. So a lot of times you don't want to wait till you get back to the mechanics area to see the signal. You can look up the track a little ways and see if you've made any time or not. And on a track this weird, your lap times can fluctuate probably as much as five to ten seconds per lap, where normally it's only a tenth of a second. So he really does have about a 28-second lead. Bashone has done a tremendous job in climbing back from 10th, going down in this muck and coming back to fifth place. He's uh, challenging Dodd now for fourth. I would have expected him to be up there a little further than he is, but uh, just watching the way these guys are riding out front, I mean, it's tough to make up time on guys when they don't make any mistakes. And the only mistake he made, he's, he spun it around and still kept it on two wheels. So I'm pretty impressed. Oh, oh. Damon Huffman goes down. Now the big question is, is the machine dead? Will he have to restart it? Will he have trouble restarting it? Well, you can see there, he's got to restart the bike. It gets going pretty quick. He's still going to hold on to the lead, but that was easy for Damon Huffman. He's so tall. That bike sitting in between those whoop de like that. He was able to reach the ground and keep the bike level while he was trying to start it. That same task would have been a lot tougher for Ryan Hughes. And we're going to take another look at what happened as he started in the corner. Watch the front wheel. It turns right there. And there's nothing he could do. You can see how slick it is. He just skis to a stop, really. And now his hands are all covered with mud. It's hard for him to hold on to the grip. So Ryan Hughes, I talked about that five or ten seconds fluctuation in the lap time. Maybe he can make up some valuable time. Well, the weather wasn't this bad earlier, but our leader, Damon Huffman, got a chance to give us our Suzuki riding tip. Factory riders are paid to win races, and most factory stars practice every day to stay in shape and to improve their riding skills. But if you're not a factory rider, chances are you only get to practice a few hours every week. So it's very important to get the most out of every single practice session. Before you go out on the track, evaluate the total amount of practice time available. If you're limited to just a few minutes of practice, like on the day of the race, try to make the most out of your time. Start by walking the track, memorizing as much as you can. Look for possible lines and check out any unusual challenging jumps or obstacles. Then, once you're on your bike, take one or two conservative laps, be aware of what other riders are doing, and try to make out lines and techniques that seem to work. If there's a particular jump or obstacle that you're unsure of, take a few practice runs at it until you feel more comfortable in doing it. Just before the end of the practice session, make sure you do one or two fast laps to be sure you can put all the obstacles together. As you finish one obstacle, be sure you're set up correctly for the next one. If you have more time available, maybe during open riding at your local track, you can really work on your endurance, skill, and speed. This is time to work on your weak points. If you lose it in the whoops, do the whoops every time you practice. If you want to improve your starts, practice starts. Make sure you challenge yourself during practice. If you only practice what you're already good at, you won't improve. A lot of guys practice when conditions are good. Do you stay home from practice when it's raining? You don't? Well, if you practice on a rainy day, you'll be sure to improve your overall performance next time it's raining on race day. Instead of going out to practice early in the day, before it gets hot, wait a little bit and try to practice during the heat of the day. You'll really improve your ability to stay competitive during midday races. Racing motocross can be a lot of fun, especially when you win. So try these tips to get the most out of practice, and maybe I'll see you in the winner's circle. For Team Suzuki, I'm Damon Huffman. That practice in the rain has surely paid off. This is the final lap. He's the leader of the 125 main. Plus, he's got a new endorsement possibility. Laundry detergent. <laughs> uh, I think he might give this to the crowd. Usually, you try to retain <laughs> some of your riding gear, and uh, I don't think this is going to be worth much. Approaching the lapper, Jimmy Nees. He, he took a face plant kaploosh. And here comes Damon Huffman. He's really deserved this one. Oh, he's earned it. He's been... Uh, Crashed once, did a couple of donuts out there, and he's just played it smart. And he's very, he's got to be happy with this win. He earned this one. His sixth straight victory, Damon Huffman. Hughes is in second place coming around the track. Brown third. Pichon has moved into fourth on the last lap. So Pichon, it's good to see him back out there healthy. Remember, two weeks ago, he wrapped up the East Coast 125 title, but fractured his wrist, and right now, apparently, it doesn't seem to be bothering him. A long way back to second, but boy, you got to pat this guy on the back, Ryan Hughes, for the great effort he had out today. Mike Brown, Pichon, and Dobb, the top five. Huffman only two more events away from fulfilling his dream of a sweep. He's with Jan. Damon.
Raymond, this is six in a row for you, but I'm sure that you never thought the conditions would be like this. Was it fun for you? Oh, well, definitely. That was one of the funnest races I ever won out there. You know, it was long. I don't know how long it was, but I was going as slow as I could and just trying to do everything right. Even though I did one 360 and I fell by the start, but uh, I think at one time I had a 40 second lead. But, uh, and those whoopty doos, those were, uh, yeah, it's so hard to go through them. I don't know. I'm excited. Well, certainly the, the fans were behind you. Thanks for that great performance. Thank you. Six wins equaling 150 points for Damon Huffman. Mathematically, Hughes and Decker still have a chance. Hughes, though, 26 points back. Has shown already the winner in the East, Davey Yezik and Mike Brown will decide second place in Cleveland. Wyndham still injured, very expected back for that Cleveland race as we go for the champagne shower. Conditions not expected to improve for the 250 main coming up next. The U.S. Super... Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Jan Beek is not the best of conditions here at Texas Stadium for Jeremy McGrath's attempt at tying the all-time win record held by Rick Johnson, David. You can see him patting down the starting groove right there, and that mud sticking to his foot. It's going to be tough out there, but he's got the balance. Jan is with his mechanic now. Skip, what have you had an opportunity to change to get ready for these conditions? Well, these conditions are pretty severe out here right now. The worst problem we're going to have is the standing water splashing in the airbox. So I try to tape up and, and, and protect the airbox as much as I can. But, you know, then you start to compromise performance, and there's a fine line. But the major, the, the only objective I have is to finish 20 laps. If it runs rich tonight, hey, that's fine as long as we finish 20 laps. Now, also tell me, look up here. It looks like you've made some changes up here on the front. What are these that you've added? Well, I just took some desert hand guards. Well, although it's not in the desert here, just to try to keep some of the mud from packing up around its hands. It's clay out here, and if it gets on your gloves, it's going to be so slick you're not going to be able to hold on. We'll find out soon how it works. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Pretty swift idea, David. Not bad. You saw the riders in the 125 track class trying to keep their hands dry, and this is going to help, I think. But if he falls down, he's going to be in the same situation. Team manager Wes McCoy of Honda is putting the number for Jeremy McGrath, taping a cardboard number above. That's not for glory purposes. No, that's just so the scorers can see. He wants to make sure he, all of his Honda riders get scored, and uh, that's a one surefire way they can see it. <laughs> Our Suzuki starting grid for the 250 main event will not include at the gate anyway number five Steve Lamson had a bad crash in practice uh, a knee injury also popped the lip pretty bad but uh, he had his problems during qualifying just couldn't come back we'll have to see the extent of those injuries later well you can see now that that watery hard pack condition has turned into a little more of a mucky situation but uh, still they're not going to have to contend with ruts it's just going to get very slick out there and they're going to try to have to keep the bike out of all that standing water and just make sure they finish the main event as jeremy mcgrath looks at all kinds of milestones one win of course tying the all-time career record of 28. two wins in the last four races of course he would be the sole possessor of that record you see how clean all those guys are? Well, that's going to change in about five <laughs> seconds now. They'll be disguised in mud, and we'll have trouble identifying the numbers, probably, as they're off. And uh, Jeremy McGrath, a great start. Tom to Hoop on his right. Craig Kudrowski, Emig, all in good shape. Let's check out the turn. Look at McGrath. Sneaks around the inside and stays clean. And then Emig comes by and gives him a face full of mud. Oh, there's Craig going off the track under the Dunlop sign. Usually you go off the track and it's slicker. I don't think it's any slicker tonight. Our riders are down everywhere. And you can see right there, look at that rider. How could he even see through those goggles? That was Roy, and he took Lawrence with him. 111 is Albertine. He's down. It's really who can stay up. That's Henry spinning out. Well, it's just difficult because it's so slick, and then if you put your foot down and try to keep your balance, your feet slide out from under you, and that's just even more difficult to try to pick the bike back up and get going again. That's kind of funny. The two riders right there, John Dowd and uh, Doug Henry, both these riders won their first big pro races in the mud. Well, there goes Albertine again. We saw Kudrowski also playing in the mud. And our leader right now is Todd DeHoop out of Michigan. Well, these kind of conditions play in the favor of... Uh, Riders that don't normally shine up there. The conditions are so much different. It really doesn't take guts to ride on this. It just takes uh, just being patient and just delivering that power real slow so the back end doesn't get away from you. So Todd DeHoop is leading his first main event this season. Look how clean he is. 
You can imagine, you can see how clean all of his riding gear is. You can imagine his vision probably still looks pretty good. Look at all the guys behind him. They're just covered in mud. The Hoop, Swank, Emig, Ward, and Henry. That is our top five. Right here, you heard uh, McGrath's mechanic talking about trying to keep water out of the air box. If water gets in there, it gets into the carburetor. The throttle can stick, and right there, look at these guys banging bars. The Honda and Troy riders. Swank on the right on your picture, and the hoop going wide. Oh, it's tough to get that momentum started once you stop down. Well, it's kind of an interesting choice right there. Swank trying to, to turn on the off camera of that jump and try to build his speed back up, and it worked, but I, I like the line of DeHoof. I think he can do that every time. Go out there and use that bank and try to keep your momentum up everywhere. Once you try to build it, you grab a handful of throttle, and all you get is wheel spin. Here's Larry Ward in fourth spot, and going down is Emig. Ward moving into third with Henry right behind him. Look at that flagger. China, he can't even stand up out there. It's just going to be impossible for Emig to get out of that situation. He's going to lose a lot of time. Larry Ward. I don't know if he started that way, but he's already discarded his goggles. Well, that's sometimes you have to. He probably didn't have a choice. He's still jumping the double right there. He looks pretty good. Problems for, for uh, can't even identify who that is. But with Larry Ward, without his goggles, if he gets mud in his eye, what's he going to wipe it with? So he's got a lot of problems to contend with. Honda of Troy leaders up top one and two. A little bit of mud. Texas Mud here at Texas Stadium. The 250 main event on the 12th stop of the U.S. Supercross Tour. Todd DeHoop is our leader right now, but Doug Henry, after spinning out in the first lap, is pursuing DeHoop. Henry, he was reaching up, pulling his roll-offs across, trying to get some clear vision. Whoa! Henry triples in the mud! Picks up the uh, deficit now on to Hoop. They are side by side. It's who picks the best rut, and it's Henry. And look at Henry jumping his way through everything, doing the triple. And he's going to have clear vision now. You see, he's elected to stay out of that rut. Where to Hoop dropped down in there, a lot of times that gets deeper and deeper, and you can throw the chain. So Henry riding smart right now. So Doug Henry now is out on top looking for his very first 250 Supercross victory. A little early to tell in this muck. Well, I like the way Henry looks right now. He's he doesn't seem to be slowed down by the rain at all. Still doing the triple as some kind of a hand gesture to his mechanic there. Probably wondering what place he's in. He might not even know because he crashed in the first lap and was way back in the pack. Here's a look at McGrath, who also crashed early in the race and is working his way back up through the pack. Yeah, Jeremy on the first lap went down. In fact, he went down twice and was in 17th place. Well, now he's moved up to seven. I think right now Jeremy does have a pretty big lead in the Supercross series, but he could easily DNF this thing. So, you know, I don't think he's going to be too worried about getting a fourth or a fifth. Just try to finish this thing and, and uh, get some more points. And David, remind me to personally thank Wes McCoy for putting that uh, Peacock <laughs> cardboard number up there on top of his helmet. Easy to uh, witness, that's for sure. Todd DeHoop is the only other rider in the race with a similar uh, type of design. Here comes Henry again, looking at the triple. Still jumping oh the triple. Jan Bikas is out in the elements with Pete Steinbreaker. Pete, your man has gone to the front, but obviously pit boards are not going to do you much good today. Uh, no, but I was thinking about grabbing one because it's not raining too hard. I'd like to just tell him to uh, ride the outside lines, and that's that's going to be uh, the place where it's going to get the most traction. So what happens? The water runs to the center, and then there's more traction on the higher outside. Is that it? Well, what it is is, you know, you got a bank to slide into, and it'll slow you down, and it'll eventually get you turned in the right direction. Well, right now, it looks like he doesn't need much help. Well, gosh, you know what? This race, this type of racing, uh, uh, one little mistake, you're sliding around. I think you saw that in the 125 race with Hoffman. And, uh, and you're doing donuts, so uh, we'll see what, if Doug can keep it up on two wheels, and if he can, he just might win it one. Thanks. Okay. Well, I think Henry missed not having that pit board out there just for a companionship. They're used to it. Well, they're used to it. He's, his mechanics over there signaling with fingers, and it's probably hard for him to even figure out which one's his mechanic. <laughs> and when we saw that whoops area not long ago, it's an obstacle course with stalled riders. Sure, you got to pick a line around everybody and, and dodge the water holes, and it's just difficult. You know, this really becomes survival. Now Jeremy's doing the triple and taking his hand off, clearing his vision in the air. Well, now Jeremy's riding pretty loose. Well, you know, what it comes down to in the mud races, it's just the riders that have the most fun out there. And right now we're going to get a look at our Honda stopwatch and check the interval from the leader back to, to uh, the hoop, who's still running in second place. 
And it's the riders that have the most fun and just go out there and get loose and get into the flow of riding it. You're stuck out there. You've got to ride in it. And the, the more aggressive you can be and, and throw the bike into the corners and get on the power hard, the more you dig down past that slimy stuff and find some traction. Only about eight seconds between first and second place. Right now, right there in the little bit of blue that you can see is John Dowd, who's also an excellent rider in the mud. Oh, big mistake by Dowd, but he holds on to it. A battle for second place to Hoop. Not that tall. You pointed up to Damon Huffman when he had some problems in the mud. It's to an advantage to be tall. Well, you can put your feet down and kind of use them like little ski rudders right there. And you see how hard it is for him to reach the ground. He almost fell over right there, and Dowd goes by him in the whoop section to take over the number two spot. There's the hoop approaching Buddy Antonez. Antonez a little bit more cautious as the hoop wants to get back into the running. And here comes Larry Ward. He wants a piece of the action. Well, Larry is a little bit taller. You see him ride with his foot down all the way through there. He can just kind of ski on that thing, and it's sometimes easier for the tall riders. But, oh, Dowd goes down again. So DeHoop moves into second place. Our leader's having problems. Henry is down, but his lead was significant. Henry DeHoop and Dowd, and we'll be back right after these words. Welcome back to the 250 Main at Texas Stadium. This is the battle for second place. Todd DeHoop and John Dowd. Dowd just taking the edge in the whoops. Jan Bikas is with the hoops mechanic down in the pits. They're probably having just as much trouble identifying these riders as we are. Mark, you're running third right now. Is Todd pretty comfortable in these kind of conditions? Yeah, Todd's from Michigan, and it rains there a lot. He practices in this kind of slop a lot. I think he can keep it up. The hardest part to keep it up right now is in the whoops because they're so pointed and it's just real slimy. Everywhere else, he's going pretty good. Now, I saw on your board you wrote fight. What do you mean by that? You want him to get up and fight with Henry? <laughs> yeah, I don't want him to. I don't want anybody just to, to him to let anybody pass him. I want him to fight it out. I don't want him to give an inch if somebody sticks a wheel and I want him just to keep going at it hard. Well, that's a great fight so far. Yeah, I think so. Lappers can be a big problem in this kind of uh, weather. You've got to look ahead. Pick your line early. Well, you just want to stay out of the roost from those guys and try to keep your vision clean. And I like his the hoops and mechanics attitude as far as being aggressive. And you know, the first time I ever rode in a really bad mud race, I was just trying to be so careful not to fall. And I ended up doing worse than I would have if I'd have just taken off and gassed it and been aggressive like McGrath is right here. You see him jumping through the whoops, taking chances, getting sideways. You get aggressive like that, you can fall two or three times and still go faster than the guys that are trying to be careful, and they end up falling anyway, so you're better off that way. The crowd is right with Jeremy McGrath. He passed two riders, DeHoop and Dowd, in that one section. McGrath now has moved from 17th to 2nd in this race. Well, I like the fact that he's getting aggressive. It probably took him a while to get into the flow of it, but when you get aggressive and start passing guys and keep it on two wheels, getting sideways, it actually becomes fun. And I think that's what we heard from Huffman, how fun it was out there. I can guarantee you that Henry's having a good time. Plus, this is his first Supercross win, if he can keep it up. Doug Henry is our leader, and McGrath now is in second place. I can't believe he's still doing the triple jump. That's amazing. Oh, Emig's in the pits. Emig's in the pits calling for Steve Butler to come over. It appears as though they're wiping off the throttle because he can't get a grip on there. If you can't, if, you, if your hand slide on the throttle, you can't turn it. I've had that problem too. It's just, you see, he's elected to go with no gloves. It's impossible for these riders. There's so many problems that you would just never think about until you actually get out there and experience it. Here's Jeremy McGrath coming through the whoops. His helmet design a little askance. Yeah, the cardboard is uh, a little <laughs> wet now. It kind of drooped over to the side. Actually, I've been in mud races that were so bad, and the, the, the mud stuck to our number plate so bad, I had to go through the scoring section and yell out my number every lap. John Dowd, who's in third place, he's looking for his first podium in the 250s. And I think that is Brooks from the uh, Team Nolene. Well, it's difficult to tell. Look at this Whoa. one. Sucked up banners. See if that, that looks like John That's Dowd. Dowd. Yes, that is Dowd. Well, the banners in the rear wheel quite possibly wouldn't have the same effect in this kind of weather, would they? Well, They'd... I don't think so. You're not using it relying on the rear brake as much as you do in the dry. Normally, th that plastic will get in there and melt, and you have no rear brake at all. Right now, the speeds that they're traveling, I don't think he really needs the rear brake. It's like riding on ice when you get up on those hillsides right there. And uh, Larry Ward's in for some adjustment. It looks like they're taking, uh, they're messing with the clutch, and it, it's possible these riders use the clutch even more in the rain. 
in the mud condition. So he's possibly burnt that clutch up, and when you loosen the adjustment, then it won't slip as much, so you're able to get more power to the ground. Well, he didn't make any friends in the mechanics area taking off like that either. <laughs> they got splattered. Uh, they, they don't have a very good spot to watch from. And right there, Doug Henry still got his goggles on. He's, he's still probably got some of that uh, roll-off strip able to go through and keep clean vision. You're only looking through about an inch tall slot, but that's better than uh, getting mud in your eyes. And speaking of vision, look at Larry Ward right here, who's ridden almost this entire race with no goggles. And I can tell you, he's got mud in his eyes, and it's, it's impossible to see. That's Jeremy McGrath in second place coming up behind Ward. Ward now is in sixth spot. But Jeremy's about ready to lap him. Jeremy's actually picked up the pace as the race wears on. If this race got longer and longer, chances are he could catch up to Doug Henry. Maybe. I think Doug's riding pretty well. Henry's got about a 25-second lead. We'll be back in a moment. This edition of the U.S. Supercross Series on ESPN is brought to you by Suzuki. Right now, your Suzuki dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And by Honda, winner of the last seven Supercross championships. Honda, come ride with us. Back at Texas Stadium, Doug Henry way out in front. A good chance to win his very first Supercross in the 250s. We're watching John Dowd in second being pursued by Jeremy McGrath on the left. McGrath doesn't really take the line anybody else uses in front of him, that's for sure, even in the mud, David. Well, it's even more important in the mud to stay out of the person's line because you know, all that mud shooting off the rear tire you see right there and right it just ruins your vision and you can't see where you're going. And look at how tough it is for these guys to try to go through these. I mean, those are like cement underneath with this grease on top, so slick. And Dow gets through there pretty quick, holds off Jeremy. The rain has stopped. The problem there is it doesn't wash off the numbers. I wonder how the scorers are doing it. Oh, it's pretty tough, but the scores travel from race to race, so they can recognize these guys' riding styles, I think. Henry in the lead as we see Dowd in second going through the deep ruts with the banners in the wheel. Surprisingly, we don't often see mud of this type, of this nature on the tour, but on our Honda flashback, we take you back to Atlanta, 1983, number 11, a friend of mine. <laughs> Well, I, I got the whole shot, but the problem was I was the first guy to find the deepest rut, and I found it right here. Watch this. Ooh. Stuck. I was stuck there for three laps, dropped all the way to dead last. Mark Barnett took over the lead, but it was Bob Hanna charging from a dead last place start to second place. Obviously, before the Georgia Dome in Atlanta <laughs> as he walks through the rut. I might add that was Barnett's lone win on the year. My buddy took the championship. Yeah, Mark won the battle, but I won the war. <laughs> Tell me the truth now. Did you really go out and practice in the rain that Damon Huffman said you should? Sometimes. I actually I had a couple of practice bikes, and the one that was in the worst shape I would take out and ride in the rain because it really destroys the motorcycle. And you can imagine the, the work the mechanics have to do to these things after this race. Phil Lawrence, who got an 11th place start, has just moved into fourth place, getting by Todd Hoop in what used to be the whoops. <laughs> now look at this. It looks like uh, either Larry Brooks or Kyle Lewis. I'm not sure. We, we've got Kyle Lewis on the screen, but I can't identify him. And looks like Brooks to me. Frustrating enough to go down, but not to be able to get back up. That's got to be demoralizing. Well, it is Kyle Lewis, and you know, it, it's even more demoralizing when we're up here laughing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Larry. Final lap, Doug Henry. He has a smile in his heart right now. And look at that, that's a triple as he heads toward his first 250 Supercross victory. A huge margin of victory in the mud. In fact, he won his first national in the mud, David. Well, it, it's unfortunate that both his races have to be uh, won in the mud it, because people sort of take that away from you. They go, well, it was muddy, so he won. But I think Doug's on his way to winning some more races in the future. And, you know, it's a psychological thing. As he does another triple here, obviously not bothered by the mud. It's, I think it's psychological. He knows that he's been riding in the rain. The other riders assume that he's been riding in the rain. And even if he hasn't, they still kind of toss that edge to Doug. And, and riders also like John Dowd, who also won in Hangtown that same day in the 250 class and is running third right now. Henry, of course, uh, looking very good on dry land in the qualifying heats leading up to this race. Right. I think in his mind he feels like he could have been a threat tonight, rain or shine, but he definitely was a threat in the rain. 
mistake free when he got out in front. McGrath even unable to pick up on the leader, Doug Henry, now our winner. Well, Jeremy McGrath, second place. No knack knack today, David. <laughs> I don't think so. One last look over his shoulder. He knows he's got second, and he'll take it. You know, it's tough to uh, come to these races and expect to win them all, especially in these conditions. And a second place is great, and it's probably pretty sweet because his teammate Doug right there, who's stoked to win his first one, I'm sure Jerry's happy for him. Throw some muddy goggles up to the fans who will scramble for him. McGrath waiting until Cleveland now to clinch his third consecutive Supercross title and quite possibly his 28th career victory. Henry McGrath doubt Lawrence his best finish with a fourth and Todd DeHoop in fifth. Ward staying in there in his battle with Kudrowski in the point situation with a sixth. Kudrowski ending up eighth. Doug, congratulations on your first ever Supercross victory. I guess you won your first national on a 125 in the mud. You must like this stuff. Uh, it's not really that I like it, but uh, I guess I could deal with it better than everybody else. So tell me, what does it feel like to come home and win one of these things? I know the conditions played a part, but it's got to feel great, give you that confidence. It feels great to go out there and, oh man, I just had so much fun. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I want to really thank my mechanic, Pete, man. He stands behind me all the way. He's, uh, He's the best guy I could ever have for my job, and uh, you know he does all the work out there. And I, you know, I mean it was, it was a bike race out there too. He made sure that the bike didn't suck any water out there, and uh, he did a great job. And I just want to tell my wife that I love her at home. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, not too happy is he, David? As he goes over to his mechanic. Whoa! Look out, Pete Steinbrecher, his mechanic gets a deserved kiss on the cheek. Jeremy McGrath coming in right behind him there. Jeremy just closer to clinching that title with 270 points. Ward and Kondrowski battling it out for second. Well, Jeremy, I haven't seen you ever smile this much for a second place. You're having a great time out there, weren't you? Yeah, I think it's the first time on the podium this year without a win. Um, it was so muddy. It was just I was just trying to have fun. I am it clean my clock on the start in the first corner, and uh, from there, and then I fell again right here, and I was just trying to survive, and then. Uh, Shoot, I just caught all the way up and was in second. I was just pulling the beginner jumps. It was pretty fun. Doug was surprised to see you in second after knowing you went down. Now tell me, once you got your rhythm, you actually were having fun out there and styling and just enjoying it, weren't you? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was uh, it was actually kind of fun. And, you know, I was messing with Skip here and in the mechanics area. The hardest part was the woofs, man. They were so 